man guys this book right here was intense i literally had to take breaks while i was reading come back continue and i finished it in like three days but i haven't read anything so beautifully written in such a long time the vulnerability the truth it was just so lovely i cannot wait to discuss it with you guys let's get into it <music> hi guys welcome back to my youtube channel it's your girl rachel here if you haven't done so hit that subscribe button so you never miss a thing today i'm excited to be discussing with you guys basi ipis i'm telling the truth but i'm lying i have to look at the book again to make sure i was holding it right because you can see it's like i'm telling the truth but uh i'm lying yeah so but I'm lying. So let me do that again. You guys, I'm excited to be discussing with you, Basi Ipis. I'm telling the truth, but I'm lying. <laughs> that was so cool. Basi Ipi is a Nigerian American writer, ex poet, constant mental health advocate, underachieving overachiever, and memoir procrastinator. She lives in Maryland with her soccer superstar store. So I got my copy of this book from Roving Heights Bookstore um, and I know that I spoke about that when I did my book haul for the month of May. You guys can check that out. I'm going to put a link in the description box below. Like I said, you guys, this book is like really, really beautiful. It's non-fiction. It is amazingly written like wow as in I well I guess I can understand because well she's it says she's an export and I know that she has done a lot of like spoken word and stuff like that I wasn't really surprised because people who are poets and people who are you know spoken word like kind of whatever like they're so good with their words and men this book I'm going to read out the synopsis this is a quote a part of me was writing non-fiction short stories about things I remembered, while another part was preserving the lies I tell myself to ensure the truth does not kill me. This book is about those truths and the ways in which we parcel facts in order to survive. Throughout her early childhood in Nigeria and adolescence in Oklahoma, Basi Ipi lived with an overload of emotions, cycling between extreme euphoria and deep depression, sometimes within the course of a single day. In her early 20s, Basi became a spoken word artist and traveled with HBO's Deaf Poetry Jam, channeling her experiences into art. But beneath the facade of the confident performer, the symptoms from her childhood were building and Basi's mental health was in a precipitous decline, culminating in hospitalization and a diagnosis of bipolar 2. Wow. In I'm telling the truth, but I'm lying, Basipi breaks open our understanding of mental health by giving us intimate access to her own, exploring shame, confusion, medication, and family in the process. Basi looks at how mental health impacts every aspect of our lives, how we appear to others, and most important to ourselves, and challenges our preconceptions about what it means to be normal. Viscerally raw and honest, the result is an exploration of the stories we tell ourselves to make sense of who we are and the ways, as honest as we try to be, each of those stories is also a lie. Man! It was such a good expose into you know somebody who is diagnosed as bipolar 2 and sometimes we hear some of these diagnoses and i know there's even a chapter that says oh it has a name like there's just a label and we just tend to like give some of these mental illnesses labels and you know it's just that's what it is and we forget that there are people behind those labels or people who have been labeled as such and then they have to even understand what this is about sometimes if we can't relate we don't really understand people don't understand oh, why would somebody want to kill themselves and ah, which one is depression just get out of it like why are you feeling down just go and watch a movie shake it off shake it off you'll be fine i ah, want you eating oh okay spit spam you're doing you know i think that this book just brings out a lot more because it's written because it's true and at the same time it's a lie which is just so amazing in that you know there's some stories that she tells which she cannot really remember and so she sort of fills those gaps with lies you know or truths because she can't really remember and i remember that there was one part that she said something and it goes like this what is truth if it's not the place where reality and memory meet <sighs> wow 
you swear that something is the truth and you can promise your life on it but it's like this is reality and this is what memories especially when you're trying to recall how you felt i remember that throughout the course of the book she could recall more how she felt than what actually happened so sometimes because of course nature abhors a vacuum and you want to fill up spaces it's like trying to tell somebody a story about something and you forget some certain facts but you remember how you felt when those things were happening but you can't just have a gap in your story you can't have a gap in your your memory and it's like that's memory and this is reality and that your truth is like kind of where two of them meet this is just someone who was being like they said viscerally raw she was being honest this was a no holds back you could tell that this book was not censored i don't even know how her family or maybe people around her must have you know taken everything that she wrote in this book like you know how african parents tend to be you know when you put out things in books i don't know how that would have come about but i just felt like there was so much honesty in this book and i really really loved it as a mental health advocate i could relate so much i love the fact that you know any nigerian who picks up this book if you're suffering with from mental health illnesses or you have any mental health issue that you know that there's something up but you can't really put a name to you just know how you feel and i know that throughout the book she she could she, she could tell how she could feel but she didn't and she and at first she didn't want to accept that oh this is like what it's called or what the label is and sometimes we get so obsessed with labels even in the health industry like okay you tell somebody your problem people just want to plaster a label on it okay this is what it is this is what it is this is what you're diagnosed with take this drug take this this but these are people still behind this diagnosis and they know how they feel and how they feel at every point in time is valid i i love the fact that this book was written by a nigerian i know that okay yes when she was maybe four or how old she moved to america and most of this book and most of her experiences were as she was in america I can tell that it was tough it was tough and this is somewhere where they are even sort of trying to come out of the whole stigmatization of mental health in africa it's a totally different case especially in nigeria there's still a lot of shame there's still a lot of you know confusion surrounding it and it was just so amazing to see how honest she was exploring her own shame exploring her confusion exploring her guilt for crying out loud she felt guilty so many times she felt like a failure because she was the oldest you know that responsibility in african households where the oldest is supposed to be perfect you're supposed to be an example for your younger siblings and then in quotes you're failing because you're failing out of school you can't concentrate you're losing weight it seems like and you, you see a lot of people want to tag people with mental illnesses as oh they're being selfish because they don't understand what someone is going through like how can you just stop calling me out of the blues how can you just not be interested in hanging out with people anymore meanwhile the person is just in their house in turmoil not even understanding you know because now that it, there's a lot of mental health awareness going on around the world some people are able to understand okay might this be what is up with me maybe i should go and meet a therapist or maybe i should talk to someone but but then you know and i can understand that she herself might not even have understood what was going on she kept on asking herself what is wrong with me i must commend her honesty man i don't know if i've read any book where someone was so wrong you see people can be can let loose when it's a fictional book but when it's non-fiction i know that even some of the self-help books that i read generally people try to emphasize their strengths they'll give you some little story about a weakness or something like that but then they would magnify their strength to show you oh yes you can overcome men she was raw she was honest she was uncensored she explored different aspects of her life from her childhood to puberty to adulthood to her relationships so how some of the relationships she didn't really do well she didn't understand why she was self-sabotaging like it was just a lot and i love the fact that somebody has done this like this is it's out there so if you are ever struggling with a mental illness and you cannot understand what is going on or you don't know how you're feeling you know or you you only remember how you feel when certain things happen and you don't really remember the facts and you just need somebody to co co connect with i feel like this book is an amazing one and if you don't have any mental health illnesses but you know that you can be more sensitive to people who suffer from mental health illnesses or people who have mental health issues in general like it's something that should be spoken about it's something that people should not have shame so if somebody can put in in a body of work like a collection of essays because this is like a memoir in essays right of different things it 
all forms part of a whole. It was simple, it was lovely, and I think that the fact it was so crazy because I think a couple of months ago I went for this conversation cafe that we do with Mentally Aware Nigeria Initiative. It's called Manny. I'll put the link in the description box of their Instagram. And we had a conversation cafe. The last one we had, I think, where we could, or maybe not the last one, the last one I attended that was a physical meet. You know, we spoke about bipolar disorder and people were learning about, people were sharing their stories, people were asking questions. A lot of people did not understand. They're like, ah, do I probably have it? Am I suffering from it? I have a friend. People were asking questions. How do I help? Okay, I'm in a relationship with somebody who is bipolar or I have a sibling or I have a very good friend. What can I do to help, you know? And it was just so enlightening and enriching to learn so much. And then I pick up this book and I'm learning so much from it about that. I, I really must commend Basi Ipi for putting herself out there. Mental health is something that shouldn't be ignored the same way that we take care of our physical health is the same way that we should take care of our mental health the same way you can boldly tell somebody oh i had malaria i had an or i had a headache or i, I broke my leg it's the same way we should be able to boldly tell people yes yeah, so I, I have anxiety i've been diagnosed with anxiety or bipolar too and not feel like a failure not feel ashamed not feel confused i hope that we can get to that point where each person just because you don't understand what someone else is going through mentally you can still accept them you can still show them love you're not quick to judge you're not quick to shrug things aside or make them feel like they're weak because we're going through certain things mentally what would i give her for this book definitely a strong 9.5 over 10 i love the honesty i love the rawness if that's a word i love the fact that she was vulnerable you could tell that she left everything out there in this book like you don't know her but you may not have met her physically but you just know her from her words and everything that she has put out there i love the fact that she was honest enough to say i'm telling the truth but i'm lying and put out all her uncertainty all her fears or her whatever it was that she struggled with before she came to you know everything even the victories there were some days that are good there's some days that are not so good you know she explains and explores everything every mental health advocate every mental health institution or even organization volunteers if we're trying to raise awareness for mental health i think that this is such a great book to read that might just give you that make you more sensitive to understand in depth from a human's perspective and if one person can be honest enough to share their experience then it just makes it all the better so thank you so much basi Ipi, for sharing your story for being honest thank you thank you thank you and i'll definitely recommend this book any day anytime thank you guys so much for watching this episode please leave a comment hit that like button and i will see you in my next video bye